in just two minutes. It is 70 degrees and cloudy in Central Park. Winds News Time, 730. Good morning, I'm Brian Britton. The indictments are in. Ex-President Donald Trump, 18 of his allies indicted in Georgia Monday over their efforts to overturn his 2020 election loss in that state. Total of 19 defendants, including Trump's former chief of staff, Mark Meadows, and Trump lawyer, Rudy Giuliani, are named. Prosecutors using a state statute usually associated with mobsters to accuse the former president, lawyers, and other aides of a criminal enterprise to keep him in power. We get more now from our partners at ABC News. Former President Trump and 18 of his allies waking up this morning under a grand jury indictment in Georgia. 13 counts handed up last night alleging conspiracy and racketeering to overturn the 2020 presidential election results. This indictment essentially alleges that from the moment the voting stopped, Donald Trump, since even before, Donald Trump was running a criminal enterprise to try to stay in office. Everything he said publicly, every speech he made, every tweet he posted, everything he did was in furtherance of a criminal conspiracy. That's how ambitious this indictment is. ABC's Terry Moran, all this is Trump, is the GOP frontrunner for the 2024 presidential election. More on that from ABC's Aaron Katursky. Even if he were to be elected again, he could not pardon his way out of this case. This case is pardon proof because a president lacks jurisdiction over a state case. The Trump campaign slamming the indictment is bogus. I'm Derek Dennis, ABC News. Wait, it's News Time 731. Traffic and transit. Here is Karen Stewart. In New Jersey, the southbound Garden State Parkway, north of 160 for Paramus Road and Paramus, we've got an accident that they're moving over to the shoulder. And then at the Essex Tolls, we've got another accident that they're moving over to the shoulder. Westbound Route 24, west of 78 in Springfield, we've got an accident there. The right lane is closed and police activity ongoing in Riverdale on northbound 287 at exit 53 for Hamburg Turnpike. The right lane and the 53 exit ramp are blocked. Northern suburbs, westbound Cross County, west of the Hutch, we've got an accident. We've got the left lane closed. We've had callers into the 10 10 Winds traffic tip line about that one. Newark Light Rail of NJT is suspended this morning, both ways due to downed trees. Bus service is being provided between Newark Penn and Grove Street stations. We've got seven and A train delays, all because of signal problems going on. As we check what you need to know about the bridges and tunnels, 35 minutes in at the Holland and in at the George, 30 minutes inbound over at the Lincoln Tunnel, and the eastbound Bell Parkway in Brooklyn at Erskine still has a two car accident with the left lane closed. We've got some delays into the area, mild slowdowns through that stretch. Alternate side parking is suspended today. The meter rules apply. We're sponsored by the Barnesburg Traffic Tip Line, which is 844-JAM-1010. Traffic and transit every 10 minutes around the clock. I'm Karen Stewart, 1010 Wins on 92.3 FM. I'm attorney Rich Barnes. If you've been in a car crash, choosing the right firm is crucial to get the help you need and the best result possible. The Barnesburg Injury Attorneys call 1800 Long Island. Kind of gloomy out there this morning. A gray start to your Tuesday as we get the Acura the four day forecast with meteorologist Dean DeVore. Yeah, the only flood advisories now out for our areas eastern Long Island where uh, we had some flash flood warnings out earlier. There's some residual flooding there. Now, that's not to say that you're not going to run into uh, some flooding on street sidewalks and poor drainage areas. I think uh, Karen's got that covered from the deluge some of us got overnight. Getting to the point where we're going to see those few leftover showers move away. Break time with clouds, maybe a little sun trying to peek out. High about 81. Real feels near 90 if and when the sun does peek out. Then there could be another shower or thunderstorm on an occasion or two later this afternoon into this evening. Those could be drenching and gusty. We'll keep an eye on that. Clouds linger down to 70 tonight. Back up to 82 tomorrow. Partly sunny. A shower could pop up, especially in the afternoon in some of the Jersey Hudson Valley suburbs. We're looking at Thursday. Warm and sticky with highs in the low to mid 80s. Real feels near 90. Friday up to 85 with a shower thunderstorm late in the day into Friday night. Looks like it dries out and warms up for the weekend. 70 on our way up to 81. I'm Mackie with the meteorologist Dean DeVore, New York's weather station. 1010 winds on 92.3 FM. Thank you, Dean. 71 in Long Beach, 70 degrees in West Orange. It is 70 this morning in Saddlebrook, New Jersey. 30 Plainfield, New Jersey residents. I'm sorry, 300 Plainfield, New Jersey residents. 300 folks had to leave their apartments. 
24 hours notice, the apartment buildings were condemned. Not one, but five of the six buildings owned by Charles Aurea and Aaron Eichron of Cyclone West 84 LLC have been condemned. We had no knowledge of any of the conditions. Said Plainfield Mayor Adrian Mapp. It is the state's responsibility to conduct inspections on anything four units and above. The state has provided one and a half million dollars to rehouse some 289 people. 150 are children. Displaced tenant Ava Flores said it's been hard on her two sons, but they'll remain strong because she knows families with five or six kids that are having a much tougher time. Marla Diamond, 1010 wins on 92.3 FM in Plainfield, New Jersey. In the battle for her backyard, Queens resident Diane Mancini says the raccoons are winning. The Whitestone resident telling CBS2 it started with one or two, but it's not that now. Not one or two, or three. We're talking up to eight. She's upset. The city's not going to do anything about it. They told her to hire a trapper, which costs about 400 bucks per animal. This is every day now. They're coming out during the day. They're coming out in the evening. So she's calling on the city to step in. No relief, she says, because it's going to cost her thousands to get uh, almost a dozen raccoons out of her yard. Celebrated story of a Tennessee family taking in an impoverished young man. You remember the movie The Blind Side? He evolved into an NFL player. Well, now there is a lawsuit. Michael Orr was a college football American, a first-round NFL draft pick and a Super Bowl champion, but he's probably best known for his role in The Blind Side, the story of the wealthy Tennessee family who took him into their home and out of a difficult life of poverty. Orr now says that story's a lie. He says Sean and Leanne Tui tricked him into making them his conservators, alleging they've now made millions off his name and likeness, and he is not. Orr is seeking an accounting of the money, compensation, and an injunction to block them from using his name. The Tuies have not commented. Brian Clark, ABC News. Wins News Time, 736, 1010 Wins Entertainment coming up. Child Star from Child Star to Mom. That story is next. The new Raid Essentials Light Trap uses light to attract, then trap flying insects like fruit flies and mosquitoes. All right, guys, short and sweet. That was the small snippet of the news for today, August 15th, 2023. For historical purposes, we are recording these broadcasts. Also, for historic purposes, just wanted to let everyone know who was watching this from the future. We had a huge thunderstorm or a storm last night. The rain was really, really bad. It was coming down like no tomorrow. All right, guys. Thank you so much for watching this snippet of the news for August 15th. We'll see you on the next video.